In our last video, we've talked about areas of regular shapes. Now we're going to talk about areas of irregular shapes. Irregular shapes have sometimes a hole missing, like this picture, or in this case, are made up of a bunch of odd looking figures. What we need to be able to do with this is figure out, can we chop it up into smaller pieces in which we can calculate the area of? Or could, in this case, could we figure out a way to use the areas and maybe add or subtract them to get the final answer? As we hear, look at this question, it says, find the area of the orange region. Well, that would be pretty easy if this piece that's colored in white was also actually just orange. Then we'd have a rectangle and we could take length times width or base times height. But we don't have that. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the area of the orange and subtract the area of the white. Sometimes we're going to add areas, sometimes we're going to subtract areas. This time we're going to subtract. As we look at the orange, we see that the height is 50 and the width is 100. The area of a rectangle is done by taking base times height, or 100 times 50. Now we look at the area of the white rectangle in the middle. And now that one we're going to actually need to figure out the dimensions. I notice that it's 10 centimeters from the edge of the circle to the edge of the white and then it's 20 centimeters from the edge of the circle, or edge of the rectangle to the white. So that gives me 30, but over here, it tells me that it's 50. What that means is that the white rectangle, even though it doesn't look like it, has a width of 20 centimeters. Using the same logic for the width, I see that the left side is 25 and the right side is 40. That gives me 65. That means that there's 35 left over. What I need to do then is take and find the area of that rectangle. We would take 20 times 35. Twenty times 35 gives us 700. Now we just need to do some subtraction and we'll get 4,000. 300 centimeters squared. Here was an example of where we have a hole in something, so we need to chop it out or subtract it out. Our next one is to find the area of this figure. I think it would be a good idea to take a moment, pause the recording. If you have to, draw the figure and then see if you can divide this shape up into shapes in which you can calculate the areas of. Take about two or three minutes and when you're done with that begin the recording again and we'll solve this one together. Although there's more than one way to divide this shape up, I'm going to show you how I would do it. I would first make this trapezoid at the bottom. Now for a trapezoid we need a base and a height. We notice that we have 20 inches that goes from side to side here which leaves me 10 inches for a height on the trapezoid. I also see that it's 30 inches from edge to edge. However, I have a piece of 5 on each end, so I'm going to subtract off 5 and subtract off 5, which leaves me with 20. I'll say area of the trap is going to be 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. 20 plus 30 is 50. Half of that is 25. And 25 times 10 is 250. I have my first area done. Next I'm going to look at the figure and I'm actually going to divide it 
into two parallelograms. What I can do now is figure this out. Since they are congruent parallelograms, this height of 20 could be divided into a 10 and a 10. The area of a parallelogram is base times height. The base, remember, goes from edge to edge. 20 is the height here, not the length of the edge. The base is 35, so we have 35 for a base and 10 for a height, or 350. Now I have two parallelograms, so I'll call it para 1, and area of para 2 is going to be the exact same. I now have my figure divided up. I have 250 for the trapezoid, plus 350 for the first parallelogram, and 350 for the second parallelogram. That gives me a grand total of 950 inches squared for the area of this irregular figure. I divided it up into one trapezoid and two parallelograms. You could have divided it up into some triangles as well. Find the area of the pentagon A, B, C, D, E. First thing you need to do is plot the points. I've gone ahead and plotted the points. If you need to, pause the recording and go ahead and plot the points yourself. As I look at this figure, I think the way I would divide it up is if I drew in another line at the top, I kind of make it look like a house. But now I have two parallel lines, so I created a trapezoid here and a triangle at the top. So I can do the area of a trapezoid and the area of a triangle in order to figure out the area of the shape. If we count the boxes, our base is going to be 8. The top of the house looking shape would be 6. And our height, which would be from the top perpendicular to the bottom, is a height of 1, 2, 3, 7. Now we can do the trapezoid. 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times 7. Half of 14 is 7. 7 times 7 is 49. There's the area of the larger trapezoid looking shape. Now we can do the roof. The base we already have at 6, the height goes right here, is 3. The area of a triangle is 1 half base height, or 1 half times 6 times 3, which would give us 9. The triangle's area is 9, the trapezoid's area is 49, together we have an area of 58. Since there are no labels in this question, we just give it the generic label of units squared. And there we have the area of that irregular shape. Here we have a similar shape and it looks to be a bit, again, like a house, what I would do in this one is I would draw in what we kind of think of as being a ceiling. The first thing I'm going to look at and see, well, can I do the area of the rectangular shape? And yes, I can, because I know that the area of that rectangle is going to be 9.2 times 3.6. So the area of this is 33 point one two. Now I need to find the area of the triangle that's at the top. Well I know how long the blue line is, which would be the base of the triangle, it's 9.2. So we'll do the rectangle here, I'll put that down quick. 9.2 times 3.6, 33.12. Now the area of the triangle, it's one half. The base is 9.2, but now we don't have a height. Eight is the height of the object from the bottom all the way to the top. But that doesn't give us the height of the triangle. However, it can help us because this piece on the left side is 3.6. From the bottom all the way to the top is eight. If I take eight, and subtract off 
I will get 4.4, which is the height of the object, or the height of the triangle. We now have enough information to multiply it out. We take the height, 4.4, and the base, 9.2, multiply them by half, or divide by 2, and you're going to get 20.24. Now we just simply add those two numbers together. Our total area is 53.36. Again, there aren't any units on this question, so we can write units squared. Here we have a circle, or half a circle, attached to a rectangle. I'm going to draw in my diameter, which is 16, and hopefully now you can see how we're going to do this. I'm going to take the area of the rectangle, area of the rectangle, which is 16 times 32, and that will give a, a good portion of what we're looking for. and then the area of the circle, but I actually want a half of that circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take pi r squared and I'm going to divide that by 2 because I only want half of a circle. Pi r squared would be pi, in this question the radius would be 8, so 64. 8 squared would be 64. Now it is completely fine to subtract these or divide these two, so I'm left with 34, or excuse me, 32 pi. To get our total area, then we're going to take the area of the rectangle and add the area of half a circle. We take 512 plus 32 pi, and we're going to get 612.53. units squared. So at any point here, I might be going a little bit fast for you, so if you need to, pause the recording and just write what you needed and then restart the recording. What kind of a shape is this? Hopefully you're able to identify this as being a kite. The area of the kite, if you remember, is diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. That we can just count off. So diagonal 1 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 times diagonal 2, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The area of this kite, therefore, would be 48 units squared. Not too hard if you know the formulas. And our last one, we actually have something that looks a little bit maybe like a band-aid or a tic-tac. We divide this up. Now imagine you had a scissors and you cut off the two ends and you pasted them together. What would you have? You'd have a circle. So what we can do in this one, we can do the area of the rectangle, which would be 10 times 4 or 40 and the area of the circle. First thing we need to do is figure out the radius of the circle. Well, the diameter is 4, so the area, or excuse me, the radius would be 2. Pi r squared, or pi 2 squared. 4 pi. We take the area of the rectangle, plus the area of the circle that we piece together from the two ends. If you didn't see that, the only difference here is you would just have that 4 pi would be divided into two pieces. But you'd still get the same answer, which is 53, excuse me, 
And we've had a lot of different irregular shapes, but obviously that's not going to be every possible irregular shape that we might write it, run into. So when you run into one, reference back to these and remember how we split up these shapes, and that will hopefully help you to answer any of the questions that you may run into.